Medical Institution. Multiple sclerosis or MS is thought to be a neuroinflammatory disease, meaning that the immune system of the individual attacks the protective membrane called the myelin sheath that covers the axon of the neurons, similar to electrical wire insulation. Damage to myelin sheets interrupts the communication between the brain and the rest of the body. There are two different types of cells that are responsible for myelinating or insulating the neurons. The first type of cells are doligodendrocytes that are responsible for myelinating the axons of the central nervous system, or a CNS, which consists of the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves. The Schwann cells are the second types of cells which are responsible for myelinating the peripheral nervous system, or the PNS, which consists of the nerves and ganglia outside the brain and spinal cord. The main function of the PNS is to connect the central nervous system to the limbs and other organs. There are several factors that may increase the risk of developing MS. MS can occur at any age, but most commonly affects people between the age of 15 and 60. Women are about twice as likely as men are to develop MS. If one of the parents or sibling of the individual has had MS, they are at a higher risk of developing the disease. A variety of viruses have been linked to MS, including Epstein-Barr virus, which causes infectious mononucleosis. White people, especially those of the Northern European descent, are at a higher risk of developing MS. MS is also far more common in countries with cold climates. A number of studies have suggested that people who spend more time in the sun and those with relatively high levels of vitamin D are less likely to develop MS. Researchers believe that vitamin D may help regulate the immune system in ways that reduces the risk of MS. Individuals who have other immune disorders, such as thyroid disease, type 1 diabetes, or inflammatory bowel disease, have a slightly higher risk of developing MS. And of course, smoking. The symptoms of MS usually begin over one to several days, but in some forms, they may develop more slowly. They may be mild or severe and may go away quickly or last for months. Sometimes the initial symptoms of MS are overlooked because they disappear in a day or so and normal function returns. Because symptoms come and go in the majority of people with MS, the presence of symptoms is called an attack. Recovery from symptoms is referred to as remission, whereas a return of symptoms is called a relapse. This form of MS is therefore called relapsing remitting MS, in contrast to more slowly developing form called primary progressive MS. Progressive MS can also be a second stage of the illness that follows years of relapsing remitting symptoms. Now the symptoms include vision problems such as blurred or double vision or optic neuritis, which causes pain in the eye and a rapid loss of vision, internuclear ophthalmoplegia, which is a gaze disorder in which the affected eye shows impairment of adduction. I have also covered this topic in another video and you can watch it by clicking here or the link in the video's description. Weak or stiff muscles, often with painful muscle spasms. Tremor. Tingling or numbness in the arms, legs, trunk, or face. Trigeminal neuralgia, a chronic pain condition that affects the trigeminal or the fifth cranial nerve, which causes a sudden, severe, and stabbing pain that can be triggered by vibration or contact with face, such as shaving, washing the face, or applying makeup, as well as eating, talking, or being exposed to the wind, clumsiness, and difficulties staying balanced when walking slurred speech, bladder control problems, either inability to control the bladder or urgency, and dizziness. MS may also lead to mental or physical fatigue which accompanies the above symptoms during an attack, mood changes such as depression or euphoria, inability to concentrate or to multitask effectively, and difficulty making decisions and planning. MS is typically diagnosed based on the presenting signs and symptoms in combination with supporting medical imaging and laboratory testing. In order to diagnose MS, we can do a blood test to help rule out infectious or inflammatory diseases with symptoms similar to MS. MRI is used to generate images of the brain and or the spinal cord. Then a special dye or contrast agent is injected into a vein and the MRI is repeated. 
in regions with active inflammation in MS, there's a disruption of blood-brain barrier and the dye will leak into the active MS lesion, which can be seen on the MRI. Evoke potential tests may also be done, which uses electrodes on the skin and painless electrical signals to measure how quickly and accurately the nervous system responds to stimulation. Lumbar puncture or a spinal tap may be done to obtain a sample of the cerebral spinal fluid or CSF. The CSF is then tested for oligoclonal bands of IgG antibodies on electrophoresis, which are inflammation markers found in 75 to 85 percent of people with MS. There is still no cure for MS, but there are treatments for initial attacks, medication and therapies to improve symptoms, and recently developed drugs to slow the worsening of the disease. During symptomatic attacks, administration of high doses of intravenous corticosteroids is the usual therapy. Drugs that prevent relapse and progression are interferon beta, glatiramur acetate, natalizumab, mitoxantrone, fingolimod, and azathioprine. It is also important to mention that based on a new published study, patients with MS who took part in a cutting-edge stem cell study are still in remission years later. Researchers found that more than 86% of the patient remained relapse-free after three years, and near to 91% showed no signs of disease progression. You can read more about this study by following the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, remember to give that like button a click. And if you'd like to watch future videos, be sure to click that red subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. For more video tutorials and tons of other medical content, visit our website at www.medical-institution.com. Thank you and good luck.